Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, Phasers. Here we're going to see a very powerful technique in this chapter where we can get the same result we obtained earlier for our low pass filter using phasers. Now what we did get with the Green's functions, the convolution, we got the ratio of the output amplitude to the input amplitude and I'm going to show you next in a series of a couple of videos that you can get that result without Green's functions, without convolution, but using phasers. In this section we're going to develop the concept of the phaser. Here we have two simple uh, circuits. We'll start here with the resistor one. We isolate everything but just the resistor and have one loop here with the voltage generator. This is generating a cosine uh, function. Voltage here is your amplitude for the voltage times cosine of omega t and that's an alternating current. And here we have Ohm's law, V is IR. Now this applies to both alternating current situations and direct current. For direct current you could take this generator away and put a 9 volt battery there or a 1.5 volt battery, a D cell say. And when you do that you get current flowing in one direction. Uh, think of this resistance here as a way to control the amount of current. If the resistance is very very high for a given 9 volt battery for example then to keep the equation true, I has to be small so that I times R stays to be 9, 9 volts. So the greater the resistance, the smaller the current. When you have the generator here doing alternating current, same thing applies here, you get more current through the resistor if the resistance is less. Well, the current is simply given by V divided by R and that's what uh, we're going to do uh, here. We're going to take the voltage, the V, and divide by R. So when you divide the V by R, so Ohm's law here in standard form, V is IR, you divide by the R, you get your current. And the current is in phase with the voltage when the voltage here is zero, the current is zero. When the voltage reaches its maximum, V naught, then you have a maximum current, V naught over R. And this will fluctuate, you know, plus the minus, plus the minus, and uh, you have the current in step. When you go to the capacitor, as we isolate here, the capacitor in a circuit, here, if you look at a 9 volt battery first, the 9 volt battery put charge on this top plate. Let's see plus and then minus down here. It's the electrons that do the moving here. Electrons actually move to the bottom there and away from the top, but you'll have plus and minus. Think of this as a constant 9 volt battery. And if you play with different capacitors here, swap them out for others, if a capacitance is large, well then the charge has to be large so that the ratio gets you your 9 volt battery. So that's a nice way to remember the formula. Greater C means you up the Q so that for a given voltage that's applied the equation stays true. Now we're going to put the alternating current in here which is switching the charge back and forth and since the voltage across the capacitor goes with the Q it's the charge that's in phase with the voltage not the current. We're going to show that. Uh, the current is not in phase with the voltage by solving for Q. Q is equal to V times C. So the voltage here times C. And now we're going to do the derivative to get the current. And the derivative here gives us a minus omega times a sine. And right away we see that the current is doing something different than the voltage. To understand what it's doing, we introduce the phaser. Now the phasers here bring us back to something we discussed in our course earlier, and that is when we looked at the complex plane and rotations. 
So we're going to look at this as a unit phasor that has length 1 and this is the cosine of omega t and sine of omega t. Think of this z as being equal to our e to the i theta as we did earlier and that gives us the Euler relation cosine of omega t along the horizontal and sine of omega t along the vertical. Now notice if we rotate the axis here by theta then this is a theta here. You have a 90 degree up there a 90 degree here and since uh, the third angles are equal because 2 r here theta theta 99d then you have two triangles that are similar but because this is a unit length vector and this is a unit length the triangles are actually congruent. So that means the longer side here is precisely cosine of omega t and the short side is precisely sine of omega t and the minus sign is here because we're to the left of the center line here in terms of the real axis. That is exactly what we have going on here. The applied voltage has a cosine of omega t and the current has a minus sine of omega t. We'll put in the constants later. Here we want to isolate just the unit phasor and what's going on in terms of the phase. So think of this t as time goes on in the future. The omega t gets bigger and bigger, theta gets bigger and bigger, and this rotates counterclockwise. Notice that the current here, when you take the real part of this phasor, you get the current the minus sine of omega t and here the real part here gives you the voltage. Notice that this one's ahead by 90 degrees because we're going counterclockwise and this one's already up there and you know here for a certain time this is the theta but look where the, the current is. Remember our trick before when we said if you multiply by i which is the square root of minus 1 you do a left face this is neat we're actually seeing this here i times z is left face which means 90 degrees to the left and that is sometimes uh, stated in this fashion the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees see which we see here reflected in this multiplication by i but the phasor the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So uh, we're going to look at this in phasor language. In phasor language the voltage phasor is the unit phasor times the voltage amplitude. Since I is reserved for current in electrical engineering, J is used for the square root of minus 1 so as not to confuse i's and j's in the equations. So our unit phasor here is e to the i, a j, replace an i, e to the j omega t and this is the amplitude that gets you the right length for the right voltage strength. And it's understood you take the real part of this phasor here to get the uh, the voltage understood. So when you see this, it's like you may not see the real part there because it's understood that you're supposed to do that. So here's the voltage phasor, but it's understood that you're supposed to do this to the phasor and really have this. So when you see that, it's in the back of your mind to take the real part to get to get the actual voltage as a function of time. You know, the real thing is a real value. It's volts. You know, times cosine of omega t. When you do a measurement you're not going to get an imaginary number. You're going to get volts. Then for the uh, current we take the uh, unit phasor here which is I times Z. So you want to then have the omega C in there in front. So what we're going to do is say well we can get that we can get that V naught in there from multiplying the voltage phasor with J. If you do that, you already have your V naught. It's going to come in there. You're going to get that V naught when you do that. 
when you multiply the voltage phasor by J, your V naught will be there and the J will do the rotation so I just have to now include an omega C. So we come down here and include that omega C. Now you might think, wait a minute, is this really true? We're going to check it. Let's just check it to make sure. We check it by taking the real part of the current and making sure when we take the real part of the current we get minus omega C V naught times the sine of omega T. So let's check that. So here we go. We uh, are going to take the real part of this. J omega C and this is your voltage phasor which I will substitute in V naught E to the J omega T. And what is the real part of this? Well this E to the J omega T via Euler is cosine of omega T plus J sine of omega T. J hits J will then get you minus one and the sine will be there and the omega C V naught go for the ride and that's exactly what we need. Notice that when the J hits the cosine that's imaginary and since I want the real part I don't even look at that. So this is what I get and in phasor language we can write this as follows where the current phasor is equal to J omega C times the voltage phasor and when I take the real part of this I get the correct equation when I take the real part of that I get the correct equation in each case voltage and current. So now we force a generalization here of Ohm's law. Ohm's law says V is I times R and the generalization is the impedance. Resistance is now replaced by impedance and we apply this to the capacitor. When we apply this to the capacitor we're going to here look at the equation with I by itself so we divide by Z. I is the voltage divided by the impedance and here is your voltage so this has to be the impedance flipped since I'm dividing by Z here and here it's in the numerator so the impedance for the capacitor is 1 over J omega C it depends on the frequency and it has the imaginary number in there so we're gonna look at this in our next section use this powerful technique to show you how to analyze a low-pass filter with phasers